Yakima Chief Hops has pioneered the use of cutting edge hop lab analysis techniques to further unlock the maximum potential of aroma hops. This unique profiling technology was created by the Yakima Chief Hops R&D lab team to explore the aroma potential of novel hop compounds, specifically those that survive into finished beer. Hops contain hundreds of different compounds, pretty staggering. Hop scientists have worked for over a century to try and determine the function that each of these play in beer production, and much of that has been with limited success. Our R&D methods were really born out of a sort of reverse engineering of those trends. The more beers that we analyzed, the more that we saw a consistent group of compounds showing up in the finished product. And so we kind of asked ourselves, why not start there and, and work backwards? The hydrocarbon group is basically the monoterpene or the terpene section of hops. Hydrocarbons very seldom make it into the brew, so I've, I've always had a little thing I always like to tell everybody. If it ends in ene, which is a terpene, it probably doesn't make the scene, so I mean it doesn't make it into the final beer. Yakima Chief Hops is one of the only companies in the world with the capability to analyze hops via GC QTOF and SCD technology allowing the study of previously undetectable aromatic components. These two analyzers have opened up so many doors and we are able to see more compounds than we were previously. Having a, a research like that done puts it in practical terms of what you can use as a brewer to experiment and explore with. It gives you some uh, direction when it comes to experimentation. The beauty of YCH's R&D lab methods is that it's not just research. The survivables chart can actually be used as a tool to help brewers make more informed decisions about when and how to use hops. Hops with a higher concentration of beer soluble compounds have a better likelihood of being successful when used earlier in the brewing process than hops with lower concentrations of those same compounds. In the same vein, we can say that hops with lower concentrations are likely to find their best success when used later in the process, such as post-firm dry hop. It gives the brewers the tools they need to be very specific and make the most out of the hops they're using to get the most bang for their buck. When we saw the survivable chart, it took us a few minutes just to look at it and say, hey, I bet you we could take this data, blend hops, and create a new pellet that can actually have true survivable compounds and we can get the most out of a pellet blend than we could ever do out of any individual hop. This next-gen data was used to engineer a hop pellet that maximizes the synergies between impactful aromatic components, monoterpene alcohols, esters, and polyfunctional thiols. The result is Cryopop Blend, a supercharged pellet that provides brewers with a dynamic solution for many applications, showing massive tropical, stone fruit, and citrus aromas. The whole idea is that we're taking what we now know are impactful components, so, you know, geraniol, linalool, 3MH, beer soluble esters, and looking at a whole harvest worth of bales, so, you know, 40 million pounds in our case, roughly speaking, and asking ourselves, of all of these bales, which ones are going to create the highest component concentrations and most impactful synergies. In some sense, you could say we're kind of Frankensteining together a super pellet to make flavors pop in beer. That's where Cryopop comes from. Cryopop is designed for brewers of all shapes and sizes. From expert brewers looking to maximize specific component concentrations in beer, to new brewers looking for a user-friendly go-to solution for a bright, juicy, fruit-forward hop character. We actually found three main usage scenarios uh, depending on how the brewer wants to use Cryopop. The first is using Cryopop to create dynamic, juicy, single hop beers. Since Cryopop is already engineered to maximize the component synergies between different varieties, it makes an excellent choice for 100% of the hop bill to create beautiful peach, pineapple, and bright lemon flavors. We're making a, uh, a West Coast IPA now, believe it or not, that the dry hop is 100% cryo. So, you know, we, we drank the cryo Kool-Aid. It's, it's working out. The second scenario is to use Cryopop as a blend amplifier. Like a chef adding salt, Cryopop pellets can be used to amplify the character of existing hot blends. When used as a 20 to 40% portion of a hot blend, Cryopop pellets will elevate levels of geranial, linalool, esters, and polyfunctional thiols, enhancing and elevating the profile of other hop characters. I knew it could be a hop that would just really accentuate the flavor of other hops and just kind of add a little genetic quality to it. So we found a combination that it played well with and really kind of 
yeah, brought those flavors out and helped accentuate the, the base beer even more. The third scenario is using cryopop as biotransformative raw material. Recent research suggests that high levels of monoterpene alcohols and polyfunctional thiols in a wort stream can create conditions necessary for yeast metabolism of hop-derived compounds, otherwise known as biotransformation. Cryopop pellets are a perfect choice for loading whirlpool and active fermentation dry hop additions with these components, thus creating a dynamic environment for yeast and hops to provide maximum aroma expression. Yakimachiv is, is like helping us a lot. It's super exciting like to see all the data. It's, uh, it's super helpful. We can have more control of our beers, maybe more like consistency. The flavors are seem more stable. I can say pretty confidently that the beers made with the cryopop blend have been extremely compelling. It was an absolute success from a sensory perspective. It's hopefully going to just change the way people kind of look at creating a recipe. As a brewer and a beer fan, I can't wait to try more beers produced with Cryopop.